Welcome to Fast Five. We have been waiting for our flying cars and jetpacks since the first days of the automobile, but it's starting to look like that time is actually, really, truly, nearly here. Not so much for jetpacks, they tend to singe the backs of your legs, but as autonomous vehicle developments have progressed, it's turned out that automating flying is perhaps easier in some ways than automating driving. At the same time, advancements in energy density and drone design have meant that passenger carrying multicopters powered by electricity are just around the corner. And so, today on Fast Five, I'm giving you five passenger drones to watch. Some of these have full autonomy, some of these are fly by wire, although simplified with some autonomy for some functions. But however they're controlled, all of these electric drones look like they might be performing short hop taxi services or letting you get some air in the near future. First up, we have a Toyota funded project called Cartivator. There's not a great deal of information on the range or abilities of the Cartivator SkyDrive project, other than that they're hoping to perform manned test flights of prototypes by the end of next year. The project is supported by around 30 people, some of which are Toyota employees donating their spare time, and they are hoping to bring what will be the world's smallest passenger drone to market as a commercial vehicle around 2025. That seems a while away given where some of the others are, but they are hoping to have their Cartivator single-seat passenger drone flying to light the flame at the Tokyo Olympics. And if Toyota do move to throw more weight behind the project, they could be a real contender. Next up, we have the Kitty Hawk Flyer. No, not the Second World War fighter. This one is an electric multicopter. Kitty Hawk's aim is to make flying more accessible and with a control system that's apparently going to enable anyone to learn to pilot it within minutes, it looks like that's a real possibility. In the US, this is classified as an ultralight vehicle, meaning you don't even need a pilot's license to fly it, at least at the moment. And it's small enough to fit in your garage, assuming you have a garage. They are planning for a release date towards the end of this year, and the footage of this thing in flight makes it look like the kind of thing I would ride in a heartbeat. Kitty Hawk Aero, if you need a test pilot, call me. The company did point out that the production version will not look like the prototype you're seeing now, and unlike the prototype which has a flight time of only 3 minutes, the production version is expected to have a flight time of around 20 minutes at a speed of around 25 miles per hour which should be plenty of time for you to have some fun in the air. Our next contender is the somewhat less than excitingly named Passenger Drone. No, not as in a Passenger Drone, but the Passenger Drone. While the name isn't exactly inspired, the passenger drone has been shown flying in both a manned mode and in a fully autonomous mode, making this one of the closest to production passenger drones around. Technically, it is a vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL aircraft, with a range of around 20 miles and a top speed of around 50 miles per hour, which is about 80 kilometers per hour. With a custom avionics package that allows the passenger to simply enter the destination, and the aircraft to do the rest, this is looking pretty close to your sci-fi fantasy of a flying taxi. The system has onboard controls that allow full autonomy, and telemetry to allow ground-based control, in addition to a manned control at various levels from a touch-based system through to a single joystick control. We should be able to bring you more news about Passenger Drone after CES 2018, because they are planning to announce something there. Another drone well on its way to production is the Ehang 184 passenger drone. The Ehang 184 is designed for full autonomy with no capability for onboard control. Telemetry does allow for ground-based control in emergency situations, but this is not a drone for those of you wanting to fly yourselves around. It has been in development since 2013 and the company have shown successful full-size prototypes. 
So this is definitely one with some potential. With a top speed of 62 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers per hour, the Ehang 184 is among the faster of the drones, at least, that we have information for. It is expected to have a flight time of around 25 minutes, meaning you should get a range of around 30 miles. With a recharge time of one hour, though, the charge to flight time is a little tricky, and those exposed rotors at leg height, I do wonder about certification in the US and Europe with those. All the same, the technology looks good, and Ehang report that a great deal of work has gone into safety, which is particularly reassuring in a fully autonomous vehicle. A four rotor failure will be handled with a rapid safe landing, and even if six rotors fail, it will land safely. But the description is spiral to the ground, which doesn't inspire images of a comfortable descent. At any rate, with a planned price of around two to three hundred thousand dollars, if you want one, you best start saving your pennies now. And so it's time for our final drone. This is the one you may actually see on the streets, or at least from the streets, depending on where you live. The Evolo Volocopter VC200 sports 18 rotors and is really a multi-rotor helicopter rather than a straightforward passenger drone. The Volocopter has a flight time of around 30 minutes and a top speed of 62 miles per hour, again giving you a range of 30 miles or so. But there is one really nice thing. The Volocopter VC200, the German company building it, have made it a two-seater, so you can have a friend along with you. You do not have to be in the Volocopter by yourself. So, no more travelling alone. Although we haven't started travelling alone yet. And the VC200 is currently undergoing certification. It is being tested in preparation for a role as a taxi service in Dubai. And that started back in September. And Volocopter says that process will take about five years, but if you want to get an early ride on a passenger drone, that's where you need to go. So that's it. Five different drones that will get you airborne in the next few years. Are you looking forward to a future in the air, or are passenger drones only going to be toys for the rich and famous? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bar. Oh, and click the Patreon link at the end of this video if you want to help us make more of these. Until next time, keep evolving!